clean shirt. Thanks. <sighs> Still working. French vocab. We've got a test. Why not worry about it tomorrow? You should be out kicking a ball, going for a walk or something. You reckon? I reckon. And I am the deputy headmaster. Great. Just great. He's not in his room. He must have gone out. Out? Hmm. Who made these? Jim. He said he was hungry. Mmm. Oh, they're fantastic. Well, I hope he took an umbrella or something. Oh, he'll be right. He's probably sitting out there happily waiting for the rain to stop. Forget the French air, like I said. Get out and get some fresh air. I think that's all that's bothering him. School. Hmm. Well, that's enough for most of us. Well, what else could it be? He well, seemed very concerned about that dog that's been hanging around. Worrying if anyone fed it, that sort of thing. Mm. Well, don't give it any of these. Far too good for it. gets hungry enough, he'll find his own way home. Trust me. Are we talking about Jim? Oh, I thought we were worrying about the dog. Ah. Oh. I suppose we ought to leave Jim some. Don't worry. I'll make him some more tomorrow. What are you doing here? You're Brian's dog, aren't you? No! <laughs> Too loud. Mum doesn't like dogs. I suppose you got in through Beth's tunnel. No! Well, I'm sorry, but you can't stay. Go on, back out. I can't look after you. You're not my dog. Go on, go back to Brian. You're hungry. No! All right, I'll get you some food. But after that, you go home, right? Yeah. I've got some French vocab to learn. A tunnel leading straight down into her room. Wow, what's it for? Think about it, Brian. She called it Beth's Tunnel. She had a picture of a dog called Beth by her bed, and Beth was the name written on the dog bowl. What do you think it was for? It's a tricky one, isn't it? She'd been keeping a dog there secretly. That's how it got in and out. You think so? And what I want her to do is look after me as well. Right. It's exactly what I need. Somewhere warm, out of the rain, she's got food. Look, she even gave me this. Wow! To play with, you know. <coughs> hey! But she said I mustn't come back. We have to make a change of mind, Brian. I need her. Somehow we have to persuade her to look after me when I'm a dog. She gave that to me, you know. Wonderful car, isn't it? What? Dobby's pride and joy. Mr Dobkin, the French teacher. Ah, yes, yes, of course. <laughs> One of the fourth years once left a fingerprint on the windscreen and Dobby tried to have him expelled. <laughs> I hope your son's ready for him. 
Ready for what? Dobby's French test every Tuesday. It's the one bit of homework you don't want your child to have missed. Ah. Yes, fail one of Dobby's French tests and you have to stay in all lunchtime, every lunchtime, and do it again until you get it right. <laughs> He's a character. You'll like him. <laughs> I'm looking forward to meeting him. <laughs> there she is. You want me to talk to her? No, thanks, Brian. It's kind of important to get this one right. I'd better do it myself. Hi. Yes? Look, you don't really know me, but I... Yes, I do. You were the boy in the girls' changing room. Ah. Uh. With my games kit. Oh. I suppose you've come to tell me there was some perfectly simple explanation. Well, there was, but Where I... did you get that? Oh. I gave this to Brian's dog. Well, I... You stole it. You stole a toy from a dumb animal. Carrie, please. Let's get one thing straight, shall we? I don't like people who steal. I don't like people who hang around girls' changing rooms. And I don't like people who take my clothes without asking. I think it might be best if you never spoke to me again. Ever. How did it go, then? Well, not as well as I planned. So... You need a bit of help from a trusty friend after all, eh? <coughs> I think you do. Um, Mr Dobkin? Yes? Um, we haven't met properly. John Walters. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? Um, I'm afraid I've got a... A couple of apologies to make to you. The first one's about my son. James? Yes, that's right, Jim. Um, I just found out that he's got a test for you to do this morning, and uh, unfortunately last night, when he was about to revise, I told him not to bother. <laughs> I see. Well, he was just he was looking a bit tired, you know, <laughs> starting a new school and everything. Oh, dear. the other thing I wanted to talk to you about. Right. You close your in the bag with you. And I'll leave you in the first aid room by the assembly hall. So you can get dressed when you change back. to my house last night. Did he? If you're going to keep an animal, Brian, you've got to look after it. You can't let him run around wherever he wants. No. Here, I can give him this. <coughs> look, Carrie, if he did run away again and happened to call round to your house, would you be able to look after him? Sorry, Brian. Mum doesn't let dogs in the house. But what about yours? I don't have a dog anymore. She died. I thought I'd spoken to you about bringing dogs into school, Brian. What, miss? To the office, please. Phone your father and get him to come and take that animal away now. Yes, miss. <laughs> assembly, John. Oh, on my way, Victoria. I just wanted to warn my son about the French test, just in case he had a few minutes to revise. I see. Oh, I shouldn't really worry. I suddenly thought if Brian can survive, I'm sure Jim can. Brian doesn't do French. No? No, he chose Arabic. We think he thought it had something to do with farming. But do you know the most extraordinary thing? He turned out to be rather good at it. It's a funny world, isn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hilarious. I can't tell you how sorry I was to hear, Carrie. Thanks, miss. You must miss her dreadfully. Yes. Yes, I do. And she was such a talented dog. 
four trophies in the last four years, and this year you really had a chance at the National Junior Championships, didn't you? Yes, miss. Which is one of those really big cups. There's no chance of your finding another dog, I suppose. I don't think so, miss. Even if I helped you look? Well, it's not just finding a dog, miss. It's learning the commands, training it, teaching it to work with sheep. Yes, I suppose so. Well, you better get into assembly, and if there's anything I can do... Thanks, miss. She can look after me. But you're not a sheepdog. You're a sort of long-haired brown thing. I can move a few sheep if I have to. I mean, how difficult can it be? You just stand in the right place and they run away. So you're going to tell her? I can't tell her anything, can I? She won't talk to me. No, right. I want you to tell her. You can say that your dog's really good with sheep. Suggest it replaces the one of hers that died. And ask if she'll look after me occasionally in return. Can you do that? No problem. I tell her... You tell her your dog's good with sheep. Good with sheep. Right. And suggest it replaces the one of hers she lost. She lost. Right. I'll write it down. Hello again. Sorry to disturb you. Um, I was just wondering how my son got on on the test this morning. Uh, are these the marks? Your son, Mr Walters, got 17 correct answers out of 20. 17? Wow. Well done, Jim. <laughs> so, he will be spending lunchtime with me in the classroom going over the test again. What? The pass mark is 18. Are you serious? Don't you approve of my teaching methods, Mr. Walters? Uh, no, I, I mean, yes. Yes, yes, of course I do. <laughs> Thank you. Um, not having trouble with Dobby, I hope, John? Oh, no, no, fine, fine. <laughs> Good. I think it's worth trying to keep the right side of him. Otherwise, he might make life a little difficult for you. Know what I mean? Thanks. I'll remember that. <laughs> right. I think I've got it. All we need to do now is find... Hello, Brian. Carrie! You're not supposed to have him at school, you know. I know. Do you know he knows his colours? Colours? I found out last like night. Look. Which one's the blue one, dog? I didn't know he could do that. He's very intelligent. That's why you should look after him. Yeah. Look, Carrie. I was sorry to hear about you losing your dog and wondered if you were looking for another dog for your sheepdog competition, if you'd like to use mine. As a sheepdog? Yeah. Does he know any of the commands? Commands? Do you have any idea what a sheepdog has to do in a competition, Brian? Well, I... No. Let me explain. The first thing he has to do is the outrun. And your dog has to run in a curve, like this, round to a point directly behind the sheep, and then stop. Then he has to lift. That means he has to pick up the sheep and bring them forward in a nice straight line. Not too fast, not too close. 
taking them between a couple of posts on the way. Then you have to drive, taking the sheep in a triangular route right around the course, keeping them together, making sure none of them get away. And somewhere in the middle of that you have the shed, separating two of the sheep and splitting them off from the others. And finally you have the pen, getting the sheep to go into the pen, then closing the gate behind them. Now, you think your dog can do all that when he's not trained, he doesn't know any of the signals and he's not even the right breed. It was very kind of you to offer Brian, but it wouldn't work, would it? You reckon you can do all that? <coughs> well, all we have to do now is find some way to convince her. <coughs> you wanted to see me, Victoria? Yes, come in, John. Right. We were wondering if you'd seen your son. Jim, no. You don't know where he is? Well, I thought he was doing extra French with Mr Dobkin. Why? He didn't turn up. What? I waited ten minutes. He appears to have found something better to do. Well, where is he? Well, maybe someone told him it was only French and he needn't bother. Dobby, please. I regard failure to turn up to detention as a very serious offence. I'm sure we all do, but before anyone gets too upset, let's find the boy and see what happened. Do you have any idea where he might be or what he might be doing, John? Well, I... Mrs Jessup, you better come quickly. There's a dog on the playing fields. It's attacking some of the first years. <sighs> Noreen, Alison said that... Good Lord! How extraordinary! I'll call the police. Uh, no, no, I don't think that'd be necessary, but could someone get Carrie over here? Carrie Howard? Uh, yes, I think she ought to see this. I'm here, miss. Oh, good. That's Brian's dog, isn't it? Yes, it is. Looks like he's driving them, like sheep. That's one of the things a dog has to do in a competition, isn't it, Karen? Yes, miss. What else do they do? Well, one of the things is separating some of the sheep from the others. He did that rather well. He separated the boys from the girls. I've never seen anything like it. What's next? Well, the last thing in a competition is to drive the sheep into the... Pen. And then... And then shut the gate? Yes. If you were ever thinking of entering competitions with another dog, it might be worth having a word with Brian, don't you think? Yes, miss. Now might be a good time. Right, miss. She was impressed, Jim. You reckon? She was really impressed. How could you tell? She had this kind of look in her eye, and then she said, I'm impressed. I'm really impressed. Great. And the other things? No problem. You can use the tunnel whenever you like. She'll leave food and water out for you every day. She was a bit surprised about the third thing, though, but she said, if that's what you wanted... Ah. Dad. Do you have somewhere important to go, Brian? Not at the moment, Mr Walters, no. Brian. Oh, sorry. Right. And where have you been? Well... You were supposed to be redoing a French test, but you never turned up. Why? Well, I... I'll tell you why, shall I? That might be easier. You thought because your dad is a deputy headmaster and that Mr Dobkin is just a geriatric old school teacher, he wouldn't bother. Well, that wasn't what... You, young man, are in very serious trouble. Dad, I missed one mark of the test. Oh, yes, and that makes it all right, does it? He's just making a fuss. He always does. Everyone knows what he's like. Mm, you think he's a bad teacher? I think he's a disaster. Yes, well, that's where you're wrong. I'll tell you about Mr Dobkin, shall I? Did you know that no one, no one in this school has ever failed a French exam in the past five years? Do you have any idea how extraordinary that is? The fact that Mr Dobkin cares whether you get 17 or 18 in a French vocab test does not make him a bad teacher. Quite the reverse. You know who the bad teachers are in a school? They're the ones that don't care. Now, 
I want you to go along to his room and apologise. And whatever punishment he decides upon, and when I last saw him, he was thinking of a public beheading, you can be sure it has my full support. Understood? Yes, Dad. Right, come on. Ah, James. I came to apologise about not being here earlier, Mr. Dobkin. I got held up and I'm sorry. Yes. Wow. I hope you'll make sure it doesn't happen again. No. Is that it? As this is your new school, James, perhaps we should make allowances. Oh, right. Great. Thanks. But it might be an idea to find someone to help you with revision for next week's test. Don't worry. It's all under control. Hello, love. Good day. Hi. Mm -hmm. Well, it got better. Is Tim back? He'll have to do some homework. Ah, uh, how was he? OK, why? Well, he had a bit of trouble at lunchtime. Did you make these? No, I did. Are they all right? Well, they're not bad. Mm. How are you sort instead of caster sugar again? Because mm. I think you might have done. Ah. Is he all right? Oh, he missed a French vocab test, but he seems to have talked his way out of it, goodness knows how. That's what he said he was going to do now. French vocab. You know, you sort of get used to them, don't you? Have another. Um, I think we ought to leave some for Jim this time. <laughs> wondering if you'd turn up. If you want anything to drink, the bowl's by the table. And if you want anything to eat, you help yourself from the cupboard, OK? You know, your friend Brian said you like being read to. He didn't say what you like to eat, but he... You want this one? Are you sure? OK, you asked for it. <laughs> 